Now, the next item of business is consideration of business motion 8858 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revised business programme for today. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 8858. Formally moved. Thank you very much. And no members asked to speak against the motion. The question is that motion 8858 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Now, now that the motion has been agreed, the nomination period for election of a member for appointment to the Parliament corporate body is now open. Uh, I think members may have received an email, but if you wish to get further information, you can seek it from the parliamentary business team. Nominations should be submitted to the parliamentary business team by 4.30 p.m. and the election will take place just before decision time today. Now, the next item of business is topical questions, and we start with question number one from David Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support is given to Burnt Island Fabrications to secure the jobs in Fife and in Lewes. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Uh, discussions are ongoing with the Scottish Government, uh, Scottish Enterprise and the company, uh, and this Government is fully exploring all the options available to save the company and the jobs which depend on it. When Ministers became aware of the situation, we immediately engaged with all the relevant stakeholders. Uh, the Minister for Energy had a conversation with the management team at Bifab to get a detailed insight into the challenges. He also had detailed discussions with shareholders of the Beatrice project to ascertain more details and also discussed the issues directly with CUA Heavy Lifting, the main contractor for the Beatrice project. He and I have both been involved in discussions today with those parties. The Scottish Government and Scottish Enterprise are continuing those discussions and we are encouraging all parties to work constructively to find a solution. I have also spoken directly with the trade unions and conveyed that we will do everything possible to support the workforce. I do appreciate this is a very concerning time for the workforce, but this Government is committed to doing everything that we can to find a positive solution to this situation. We want to see a solution at Bifab and ensure that Scottish engineering and manufacturing are central to the supply chain for the renewable energy sector and for oil and gas going forward. David Torrance. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Following an announcement yesterday from the GMB and Unite members regarding the planned working, I think it is clear that the workforce at Bifab are serious about playing their part in the company's survival and future success. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that the Scottish Government owes it to those workers to leave no stone unturned in finding a solution? Cabinet Secretary. I do agree that that's an obligation on the Scottish Government. Of course, we're not directly involved in this. This is a contract between private uh, companies. Uh, and the issues which have arisen have been between those private companies, but just for the reasons which David Torrance has mentioned, of course we are uh, very interested and want to do what we can to try and help uh, try and achieve a solution. At root, of course, it's the future of 600 people directly employed, up to 1,400 people uh, in general, and including contractors and subcontractors. That has a huge impact on the areas that David Torrance has mentioned, both in Fife uh, and in the Western Isles. And of course, we are interested uh, to make sure that for, for the benefit of those individuals, for the benefit of the contract for the renewable sector and for the Scottish economy to do whatever we can to try and help the situation. David Torrance. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. More generally, BIFAB plays a role in Scotland's green reindustrialisation. To maximise Scotland's renewable potential, create jobs and grow our economy, we need the engineering skills, and fabrication capacity that Bifab has at its sites in Burnt Island, Methil and Arnish. What priority does the Scottish Government give to placing and securing the future of Bifab in terms of importance of Scotland's wider economy and long-term future of the renewable energy? Cabinet Secretary. As I said, it's my firm belief that Scottish engineering and manufacturing are central to the supply chain for the renewable energy sector, but also for oil and gas going forward, with several billions of pounds being invested in offshore wind and the potential for more investment in our offshore oil and gas sector. This government believes that this Scottish supply chain should be well placed to take full advantage of these opportunities. Thank you. There are five supplementaries, so depending on how, um, whether we can get through them all. I'll start with uh, Alexander Stewart. Officer, reports say that delays in payments have contributed to Bifab's cash flow problems. Considering Scotland has the highest level of late payments of any part of the United Kingdom, with reports that 67% of companies are effective, what action is the Scottish Government taking to solve this ongoing and severe problem which faces Bifab and others? 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, just to repeat for the benefit of Alexander Stewart, these are private companies involved in this uh, contract. The Scottish Government, for our part, have taken action to make sure that we pay all our suppliers uh, promptly and also through the business pledge, we ensure that uh, as many companies as possible, the last count over 400, also follow best practice in relation to that. Uh, I don't think that delays in payment are at the root of this problem. Payments certainly are, um, and making sure that uh, uh, payments are made uh, as they become due, of course, is a very important part of that process. I don't think there's much value in going into more of the detail, given the discussions that we currently have with the private companies uh, involved. But I think Alexander Stewart, as a regional member for the area, will want to be assured that the Scottish Government is doing what we can um, to try and make sure that we have a solution uh, to this situation. At the base of this is, of course, the future of 1,400 people during a very difficult time of the year uh, and a very important contract and, of course, uh, the reputation of the renewable sector in Scotland going forward. So we are well aware of the challenges which are here. It would be useful to have the general support of other parties in relation to this, uh, and I think that would help us carry as much weight as possible into these discussions. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Arnish in the Western Isles employs over 150 people in Bifab, and that's a disproportionately large impact on the local economy. Those jobs are one of the biggest private sector employer in the area. He talked about working, the Scottish Government working with Scottish Enterprise, but he never mentioned Highlands and Islands Enterprise. And I wonder what role they will have in working with, alongside the workers in Arnish and indeed the trade unions to make sure that reassurance is uh, given to the workforce and alternative jobs if, if those jobs cannot be saved, will be found. Cabinet Secretary. Well, just to reassure the member that I have been kept fully engaged in the process and, of course, have a direct interest in the site in the Western Isles, uh, being the owners of that site. I think I would just make the point that we want to use anybody's good offices to try and achieve the right solution here. As I say, I have been um, involved in this process and kept engaged as well, but we want to try and use anybody's uh, good offices. And the point that's made by uh, Ronald Grant is a very important one. The impact on the Western Isles of 100 jobs is huge. It's no small matter that 1,300 other jobs elsewhere in Scotland could also be jeopardised by this. So we're well aware of the potential damage that can be done, not just to individuals, but to the economy. And so whether it's High, Scottish Enterprise or any of the other parties, uh, and indeed the UK government who have a role in, in this as well. I'm not going into the details of that, but they have a very direct role as well. We want to work with all parties. We're not being precious about this or trying to keep this to ourselves. We want to get the right solution and are happy to work with anybody and make use of all the assets that we have to get that solution. Mark Ruskell. Thank you. Um, given the statement from the Dutch contractor Seaway Heavy Lifting that it is, and I quote, keen to support BIFAB's workforce, can I ask the Minister what his understanding is of this offer? and also if he plans to speak to his counterpart in the Government of the Netherlands. Cabinet Secretary. We have engaged with the company uh, mentioned by Mark Ruskell and are looking to engage further with that company. They are uh, central uh, to, obviously, the contract itself. Uh, and there has been some uh, movement in terms of the willingness of different partners to try and uh, come to a solution that will uh, keep uh, BIFAB uh, going through the contract and achieve that contract. But there is still some way to go. Um, we haven't had discussions and don't uh, currently plan to have discussions with the uh, government of the Never Netherlands. We are discussing with the appropriate party in this case, which is Seaway uh, Heavy Lifting. Uh, if there was a, a rationale or a, a purpose behind contact in the Dutch government that uh, Mark Ruskell is aware of, I'd be very keen to hear exactly what that is in all sincerity so that we can take advantage of any opportunities. But in the meantime, we'll continue discussing it with the parties most closely involved. Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that potential job losses at BIFAB are not the first time in recent months and years that Leavenmouth has been devastated by unemployment. And today, across my constituency and my colleague David Torrance's, one in three children live in poverty. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what consideration has been given to establishing a group or a task force in light of the BIFAB situation and whether he will meet with myself and fellow Fife MSPs to discuss urgent proposals to support the local economy? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I say, first of all, Jenny Garuth makes a very good point about keeping members, uh, MSPs and MPs aware, and I'm certainly, and Paul Wheelhouse has been involved with this um, for some time as well, very uh, willing to meet with those members to keep them updated. As far as we're able to do that, some of the discussions, as can be imagined, uh, are uh, co commercially confidential, but where we can pass on information and the current state of discussions, we're happy to do that. So uh, I will ensure that that happens in relation to both Jenny Gorruth and other members with an interest. 
uh, in the area. Uh, in relation to the point that is made about a task force, well, I think we have assembled the people uh, necessary to do that. Um, of course, we have had task forces in the past. I think at this stage, uh, our focus is on making sure the company stays viable and the jobs stay in place. And I think we have all the resources and the different parties available to do that. But of course, we will keep that uh, under review. And just to, uh, again, uh, confirm to Jenny Goruth, we're well aware the points that she makes, uh, very um, uh, pertinent points about uh, the level of um, unemployment in Fife, in her part of Fife in particular, very aware of that. And of course, that's another reason why we want to pull out all the stops to try and ensure these jobs stay where they are and that this contract is completed. And Claire Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer. This is an extremely worrying time for the workforce and the local community. And there has been conflicting speculation in the press that the root of the problem at Bifab is a dispute over delayed payments between the company and Seaway Heavy Lifting. And while the Cabinet Secretary says he doesn't believe that's at the root of the problem, does he recognise that delayed payments is an issue here? And if so, can he confirm the value of the payments which have been requested of Seaway by Bifab, the value of the work that has been certified and the value that has been paid to buy fab either in the chamber today or perhaps in confidence to MSPs because until we have clarity over the financial picture we and most importantly all the workers at buy fab are in the dark over how this issue can be resolved. Secretary. Uh, can I give the assurance uh, to Claire Baker that we will seek to pass on as much information and especially in terms of the amounts uh, involved as we're able to do I'd rather check and make sure that we're doing um, that in, in a way that's consistent with their obligations to the private sector partners that we're discussing uh, this with. Uh, I, what I'm saying in relation to delayed payments, it's not so much delayed payments as disputed payments, which may of course lead to delay in a payment being made. That would be the nature of a dispute. So that is more uh, in the character of the issue that we're looking at than uh, necessarily a delayed payment. Um, obviously, it's a relationship between the two. And it's trying to get to the bottom of that issue and a number of other issues such that we can ensure there's a, a, a cash flow available to BIFAB to keep things going in the meantime in terms of paying their staff, which is crucial. And can I just say how much we appreciate the activities of the trade unions in uh, continuing to work uh, in the yards under this, uh, as Claire Baker says, a very distressing time for them. Um, so we do have to have an obligation to try to work with the private sector partners. There's a, a position of trust there in relation to some of the figures which are passed on to us, but I do undertake to pass on whatever figures we're able to, uh, to uh, both Claire Baker and other MSPs with an interest. Can I thank the Minister and the members for getting through all five questions. Question number two, Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Ask, Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the reported criticism of the Scottish Police Authority by some members of its board. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, the report, which was published yesterday, relates to the early years of the authority's existence. A range of measures have been taken to learn from experience and strengthen governance arrangements since that time. In order to address a number of remaining issues identified by HMICS earlier this year, I commissioned a review of the executive functions to ensure the board is getting the support it needs to perform its role effectively. The review is expected to report in the coming weeks. Margaret Mitchell. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. In the Scottish Institute for Policing Research Report, one former SPE board member states that every time we try to bite, the government removes the tooth. I have been shocked, absolutely shocked, at the level of government interaction. Will the Cabinet Secretary comment on this quote? And given that Scottish ministers have formal powers to give directions to the SPA, so long as these directions are not related to police operations, will he confirm if he or any other Scottish ministers have ever used these powers? And if so, when and under what circumstances? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so officer, in relation to the former point which the member made uh, reference to, although ministers do have power of direction over the SPA, it's not a power which I've ever exercised, and I don't think it was a power which was ever exercised by my uh, predecessor. In relation to the idea that uh, Scottish ministers are in some way uh, interfering with the role of the SPA, that's one which I strongly refute. However, the member is not satisfied with my own response to that. Uh, she only has to look at the evidence which was provided to the Public Audit Committee uh, by HMICS, uh, Derek Penman, when he said that he found no evidence of Scottish Government interference in the setting of agendas or submissions of uh, papers. However, as a government which is responsible for setting the National Strategic Policing Authority's uh, overall objectives, uh, we clearly have ongoing engagement with the SP on a regular basis in areas of shared interest. 
uh, but as HMIS, HMICS have already identified, is that they have found no evidence to support the suggestion of government interference. Margaret Mitchell. When the 2012 Act was passed, concerns were raised from all the opposition parties about too much ministerial influence. These concerns fell in deaf ears. Whilst the SBA chair appointment process has been modified for the current selection process to include the convener of the police subcommittee, the Cabinet Secretary still retains major influence in that appointment. Will he now confirm that the Government will revisit the 2012 Act and amend it to ensure that Parliament as a whole selects and, crucially, is involved in the decision as to whether to reappoint the SPA Chair and that the discretion for Ministers to intervene will be transparent? In this way, the new SPA chair will at least have the comfort of knowing that he or she does not have to rely on the good grace of the Cabinet Secretary for continuation of their appointment. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, have no plans to revisit the legislation. Mary Fee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Media focus and attention on the SPA board has been an ongoing issue and detracts from the work that the board does. What steps will the Cabinet Secretary take in conjunction with the board to ensure that all board members have proper training and fully understand not only their individual roles but also their collective responsibilities. And in relation to governance, will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that the clear dividing line between the scrutiny role of the board and government oversight is fully understood by all parties? Cabinet Secretary. And also, the member raises an important issue because there is an issue about making sure that those who join public boards have the necessary training and support in order to undertake their duties effectively and I'm uh, and as a government we are very keen to make sure that, that is happening effectively that's why in September uh, uh, last year um, the Scottish Government implemented a new corporate induction program for all new board members uh, going on to public boards to ensure that they have got the necessary training and support to assist them in actually undertaking their role and also ensuring that they have a proper understanding of the on-board guidance which is issued to them and how they should interpret that uh, guidance as it will what I can also assure the member of is that the work that I instructed through uh, at Nicola Merchant, the Deputy Chair of the SPA, uh, along with uh, Malcolm Burr, is to look at the overall support function that's been provided to the SPA board to identify whether there are further measures that can be put in place to help to support the board members in their role. That's not just about the board and themselves making sure that they're getting the right information, but it's also about making sure that Police Scotland are providing them with the information that the board require in order to hold Police Scotland to account and to scrutinise the actions of uh, the police service and in particular its executive team. So I'm very much committed to making sure that board members get the training and support that they require and the work that's been taken forward by Malcolm Burr and Nicola Merchant is precisely there to help to support the board in discharging its responsibilities and identifying what further support is necessary to make sure they can do that effectively moving forward. Uh, thank you. That concludes topical questions. Apologies to members who can get in.